I'm Christine Short, um, and tonight I am joined by Kaden and Matt, who are the Teen Advisory Council Teen Coordinators. Um, they are here tonight to answer your questions, talk about what it is like to grow up as someone who stutters. Um, both of them are in college, so they have definitely made the transition from grade school to middle school to high school to college. Um, they're here to talk about looking for a job, dating, talking to teachers, what their parents did that was amazing, what their parents did that bugged them. So again, my name is Christine. I um, am the Family Programs Co-Chair. I am also the Vice Chair of the Board of Directors of the National Stuttering Association. I have been involved in the NSA for 10 years and I have been running these um, parent Zooms for, um, I guess, during the pandemic. Um, so I'm excited to be here tonight. Um, Matt, would you like to introduce yourself? I, I yeah. Um... So mm, my name is um, Matt. P uh, Matt Phillips. Um, um, I'm one of the uh, teen program coordinators uh, for the um, National Stuttering Association. Um, 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 I've been going um, to the NSA conferences since 2015, so this past summer was my sixth conference, and I'm um, 21, and I'm currently a junior at the um, at the University of Connecticut. Um, a double majoring in um, speech language pathology and psychology. Fancy, thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Caden? Uh, hi, my name is uh, Caden Short and like Matt, I am also one of the teen program co-coordinators. Um, I'm 19 years old and I've been involved with the NSA since I was 10. So the, this virtual conference this past summer was my ninth conference. Um, and I've been involved with, with, with the TAC for the past five. Um, I am a sophomore at New York University. Um, and I'm studying economics, although that is subject to change. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us as well, Kaden. Um, as I said, for those of you that are joining us, Kate and Matt are here today to answer your questions about what it is like to grow up as a person who stutters. Um, I asked them if there was anything that they didn't want to address and they didn't come back with anything. So don't be shy, feel free to ask questions. I did pose this uh, same question in the NSA Parents Facebook group. So I do have some questions already um, that parents wanted to know. The first question is, um, did it bother you when you were in grade school? So think back to grade school and your parents asked you about stuttering in school, such as, did you have any issues with teasing? Are people noticing your stuttering? How do you feel about your stuttering? Um, can one of you share your thoughts on that? Sure, yeah, I can go first if that wants to follow up. Um, I would say, no, it, it, it never really did bother me when my parents would ask um, if I was being teased or how things were with, with my teachers, um, how they're going just like in a classroom environment. That part never really bothered me. What bothered me more um, was when they were asking about fluency, um, like how well I was stuttering at school, how the speech therapy was going. Um, those kind of questions always bothered me a little bit more than the teasing because when there was teasing, I, I'm a shy kid. I never really would tell them if something was wrong. So they kind of had to, had to pry it out of me a little bit. Um, so I think them asking kind of initiated that conversation, um, which helped when I was being teased in school. Um, 
because there's, there's not really a, a whole lot, you know, not a whole lot of people that I can talk to about that besides my parents. So them asking was, was helpful for me in that way. Yeah. Um, so I would probably say, um, 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 say the same thing um, in that like them like checking in about it it didn't um it didn't bother me that much um what I would say is like I probably didn't want to like talk about it with them um but now that like I can like look back I definitely did like um I definitely like did appreciate when they like um when they would just kind of like check in and see what's been going on like um with like kids in school I would teach us um and I would also agree that I like wasn't as big a fan about like questions about like whether like um whether or not I had like been e e using my like speech tools or like things like that um but I feel like it was beneficial when it was like focused more about like the social side of things. I know that I always wondered how often is an appropriate amount of time to ask without being annoying. What would you guys say to that? Um, I think it, I mean, it obviously depends on the um, situation and if there has been a, a history bullying you know um but i would say if, if, if it's at the point where it's you know you're asking every day and the answer is usually no um i don't know i i think i would be annoyed if you know everything was going well at school and people kept asking me you know about how if it was going poorly um if i was being teased that would bother me a little bit um so i don't know i think it's different in every situation but I wouldn't ask, you know, a kid who doesn't stutter, um, you know, how, I, I think, I don't, sorry, I think, um, you know, if you have a kid that stutters and a kid that does not stutter, if you're asking the kid that does stutter, you know, are you being teased at school a whole lot, um, a whole lot more than a kid that doesn't stutter, they're going to kind of feel that, the pressure on them, and, you know, maybe they're going to feel the difference, um, to put it frankly. Um, so I, th I think as long as you keep a balance between th the two, um, it's, it's good. That makes sense. I, I, yeah, same. Um, um, I don't, um, um, don't think that I, um, I don't think that I have much, um, a, to add uh, to that. Okay, well, I appreciate that. Um, okay, the next question. What tips do you have for overcoming negative self-talk about your stutter or any other insecurity that you may have about yourself? So this is a deep question um, because we all have insecurities about ourselves. Um, but how, what do you guys do um, to overcome that natural negative self-talk. Um, yeah. Um, so I guess um, something that I something that I will like think about when um, when I like can catch myself um, doing that is like um, um, is like I'll just like think about what I'm like thinking that's negative, and I'll just kind of like pause and then I'll ask myself like so what and it's like so what if like um like so what if I like I'm giving a presentation and I stutter or I'm just like talking to someone and it happens and it's just like um because like um because like I probably will like um it's not like a question of like whether or not it's going to happen it's just like when it will happen um, so I found that when I can like catch myself and just think like, so what, and like, what is the, like, um, what's the worst thing that will like come from this? It's probably, it's probably not as bad as I think 
it's going to be. And something that I've also um, found that's helpful to think about is like that um, is like that people think about me a lot less than a lot less than I think they think about me. And it's like they probably don't like um, they probably like don't like like um like they probably don't notice but think negatively about all the same things that that I think they notice and that I think they think about um so that's something that I've found to be um to be useful right I I think Matt hit it spot on with that um for me it's I know that I stutter um I always have I most likely always will um, so when I get, you know, when I start to overthink it or I have a presentation, I'm getting nervous for it, or if I had to go meet somebody new, um, I try to step back and just think about, you know, everyone kind of has their thing. Um, everyone's, everyone has insecurities. Um, mine just happens to be the way that I talk, and I can't control that. Um, I think the biggest part for me was just kind of surrendering that control um, and just, you know, it's not, a, it's not a matter of if I'm gonna stutter, like Matt said, it's gonna be when I stutter. Um, so I think changing my, my, my perspective in, in that sense um, really helped just kind of, kind of um, make myself stop, stop, stop thinking about all the negatives of stuttering um, and just, um, just thinking about other things that anybody else who, who are fluent would also think about. I think you both made some really good points. Um, Matt, I wrote down the so what, and I'm not going to employ that this week um, with my own things. And Kaden, I appreciate the everybody has their, their thing um, because that's very true. Um, okay, another parent, this is probably these two dovetail together. So maybe you don't have anything else to add to this and maybe you do. How do you manage your concern about what others may think? Um, and I know that you two right now are speaking as a 19 and a 21 year old, um, but a lot of parents, you know, are parents of eight, nine, 10 year olds, 13 year olds, and you guys can reflect back to you know, being in front of your class, giving a per presentation, how do you manage the concern about what people are thinking? Um, I actually have a, a little story to tie in with this. Um, when I was in middle school, I had to give a presentation that had to be completely memorized and it had to be given in front of our entire class. Um, obviously, I was very nervous to give that presentation. And a few days before I asked my teacher if I could just do it in front of her, um, and she, she said yes. It was no. It was no big deal. I did it in front of her, and it, it all went it all went well, and I got a good grade. However, on the day when everyone else was presenting in class, I was the only one that didn't didn't present. And my friends afterwards, you know, asked, you know, "Why didn't you talk in front of the, the, the class?" And I originally had told everyone that I thought I had an appointment and I had to leave early so I did it beforehand but I told one of my good friends you know I just don't want to stutter in front of the entire um, um, an entire uh, um, class if I don't have to and he kind of gave me a weird look and said everybody in that room knows you stutter nobody cares how you're talking they care what you have to, to say and that was what, what really um, um, that, that's what clicked in my head was that, you know, it, it doesn't matter how I'm saying something, as long as I'm giving a well-informed, good presentation, um, it's still good, gonna, gonna turn out fine. Thank you. Matt, do you have anything else to say about managing what other people are thinking? Mm -hmm, yeah, um, so this, I guess, kind of like, um, um, this kind of like you said it like ties into the last question a bit and it's that like um, and it's like that you can't really like I um, mean you can't really manage like what people think and the way that I kind of like uh, um, oh yeah um, you can't manage what people think and like what they say and like what they like do and the way that they react 
but the way that I've tried to um or something I've tried to something that I've tried to keep in mind um um was like that the way that someone else responds that's a reflection more on them and it's not so much a reflection on me so if someone um like makes a um makes like a like makes a rude comment or they laugh or they like make like a bad joke because i stuttered on something i um i try to keep it in mind that it makes them look bad it doesn't make me look bad and it's kind of like that's just like since you can't control what people will do that's what i try to like keep in mind thank you i think um you both made some good points there um let's see here okay so in the chat i would like to know what speech tools helped you the most i'm sure you both have opinions on um on this matt do you want to go first Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so I would say like when I was like, um, so yeah. Um, so um, what I would say is like when I was like younger and like doing um, speech therapy with the school, um, something, um, uh, let's see. Um, I guess the speech therapy I got when I was getting it in the school was like the pretty like traditional, like, um, fluency shaping and stuttering modification type things. So like, um, so like trying to do like pull outs and like light contacts and like, um, and like, um, those types of strategies and tools. And I think that they, um, I personally didn't find them to be the most useful just because one, it was difficult to take those outside of like the speech room and like, um, and like to like go out into class or go out um, to like the cafeteria and to like have them like generalize into like that setting. But something that I think was even like less helpful, I guess, was that when I was in like school speech therapy, I knew I was going because I stuttered, but the SLP like didn't really like talk about why I was there, if that makes sense. So it's like, um, so it's like there wasn't a whole lot of like talking about like why I was there. And it's also like um, the disfluency itself, like that's like not like the only like component of Stuttering, like, um, like that's the side of things that's like, oh well, I, um, I was like teased by so and so. Like, what should I do about that next time? Or I'm like, oh, I want to say something in class, but I feel like I shouldn't. And it's kind of like since I was never like talked to about it as just like, like, like since like the since the SLP didn't ever really like talk about it in that way, like I didn't really know what to do about it. And since then, um, and then like um, since then I've done a different type of um, speech therapy um, that's called avoidance reduction therapy. And it's less focused on like trying to achieve fluent speech which seems kind of like, um, which seems kind of like counterintuitive to seeing a like speech therapist because you stutter. Um, but the goal behind it is, um, is to be like effective at communicating whether or not you stutter. And I found that to be the most helpful um, because it's what has like helped me not avoid saying what I want to say and like feeling like, and so I'm, situations like I like can't say what I want to say um so I feel like what I've personally found most helpful is less like the speech tools about trying to like stutter less and like just like saying what I want 
to say. Tatum. Right. I also agree with Matt. Um, I was in speech therapy for about five or six years from when I was in first grade until right until I went in the middle school. Um, and while I was learning those technical techniques um, that Matt mentioned, my stutter was a lot better. I, I felt like I was speaking more fluently, um, that I was using the techniques. However, emotionally, um, the, 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 those, te those techniques weren't really helping. Um, of course, my stutter was still there. Um, however much I tried to minimize it, there would be times where I just couldn't control it and it would just get um, it would just get out of hand. And as I transitioned o away from speech therapy, um, I think the techniques that I kind of developed on my own and just as I was talking, I, I found, you know, I found ways to implement the techniques into my everyday speech. But I also kind of just got new things because I knew how I spoke and what I would say. Um, so like onset words, whenever I say my name, I never just say it outright because I can't say my name outright. Um, so I say, hey, I'm Caden, um, just because that helps me break it in, break in to my sentence. Um, however, as I'm getting older now, um, the, emotional, the emotional side of stuttering never really goes away. Um, and even though I have days where I'm more fluent than others, I have days where I stutter a lot more, um, you know, the emotional side, it, it always sticks. Um, so the, the techniques that I learned in speech therapy, um, while they did help me, you know, get a little bit more fluent, I realized over time they were making me focus on how I was saying things and they were making me focus on every time that I did stutter, um, that I, I couldn't really just, I, I couldn't speak freely. Um, and I think as I transitioned out of speech therapy, and began to take my speech into my own hands, I learned how I could speak freely better just by trial and error on, on my own. How do you manage the emotional aspects that are still there? Um, it's hard. Um, like, I, like Matt and I were talking about earlier, um, you know, about managing how, how you perceive what other people think about you um, and your insecurities. Um, it's just my biggest thing that I think about um, when I get nervous about stuttering is I've stuttered th this way for 19 years. Um, you know, what, what's different now? Um, and um, like I mentioned, like I mentioned, before, um, people care about what I'm saying, not how I say it. Um, so I just repeat it to myself and I keep thinking about that. Um, and I think that, that that helps with the majority of uh, my emotional um, side of my stutter. Can yeah. You? Oh, go ahead. No, yeah. Um, so I um, just like thought of um, uh, two um, quick things that I just wanted to kind of like um, toss in is that I um is like that I don't want to like make it like sound like that like I like don't avoid whatsoever and that like um because like that's like not true it's like just that I try to like not let it like um I try to like not like let the like question off you of whether I like Dada, like keep me from doing things that I like want to do so like say like um um so like um so like say like sometimes I'll like go out to a restaurant with some of my like um um with like some of my um a, some of my poems and like sometimes I just do not want to go up to the counter and talk to the cashier and say what I want. So sometimes I'll just be like, hey, um, um, hey, Kyle, um, 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 can you go up and like get my food and like tell them what I want? And, and like, 
while that is like avoiding, it's something that I think of like, if I'm not avoiding most of the day and the only time that I like don't want to like talk to someone is to get food at like a fast food place, that's like a like compromise that I am like fine with. <laughs> um, and it's not like it needs to be like something that you do 100% of, um, um, of the time. And I think like that's like something that's good to um, keep in mind. And, um, and I guess like the like second um, quick point that I thought of was like that while I don't necessarily like think doing speech tools with the goal of becoming like fluent is necessarily a bad thing. I think it's like important to like find the balance of why, uh, um, um, I think it's finding the balance between saying it's okay to stutter while simultaneously like trying to like um trying to practice speech tools speech tools with the goal of fluency and it's like just kind of like important to like make sure that like the like that the kid knows that it's okay to stutter um because the messaging it can like be kind of confusing if you like say it's okay to and then if you like then like say okay well now let's try doing these speech tools and try to like stutter less so i think it's just like something to um i think it's just something to like keep in mind and like um to try to find a balance of like those two things i think what i'm hearing you say and certainly correct me if i'm wrong is that effective speech therapy is is going to address your internal dialogue and feelings about stuttering and mm -hmm. all of the potential potential situations you may face like you um, gave examples of um, while also working to make you an easier and more effective communicator whether or not you stutter yes okay yes okay and so i i think the three of us agree that there are benefits to speech therapy mm -hmm. um, if it if it's meeting all of, all of those kind of parameters, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see here. So this is um, from another parent. They're wondering how much you practiced at home. Um, was it helpful to practice at home? Did it make you feel like your parents were overemphasizing your stutter? Um, I know the answer from one of you um, because <laughs> I've heard it. Kaden, why don't you tell us about that? Um, for me, it was really frustrating to practice at, at home. Um, I really did not like it. Um, I, I viewed it as I was going to therapy. Um, after school, two or three days a week. And that was like my practice. Um, that, that was my practice um, time. And I didn't want to bleed over into my home life or school or anything like that because I had my set time for speech therapy. Um, the same way I had set times for going to football practice. Um, although we did, we, um, football, you know, we didn't want to bleed over into dinner time because then my, my mom would get mad. Um, and same thing with speech therapy, um, when I would come home and my parents would talk about, you know, what I learned and all that, that was okay. Um, because I think it's good that, that everyone's on the, on the same page um, on, um, with, with that kind of stuff. But when it was doing my speech therapy homework and, you know, it, it reminded me to slow down, use my techniques, think about the technique I was going to use before I started um, saying what I wanted to say, that made it feel like they were focusing only on my stutter and how I was talking versus where I was telling them about my day of school or about um, the practice I just had. Um, so personally, I, I think I, I enjoy having that separation and that, that, that pressure-free environment at home where I can just talk how I want and not worry about um, my techniques. Understandable. 
Matt? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think like um, what Caden said is like 100% like the same way um, that I feel about it. Um, and it's, um, and like, it's not that I think that it's necessarily bad if like the child wants to practice a little bit. Um, um, when they come home, but I think that like it's important that you like set and like the child sets specific time of like this is like the like five minutes that I'm talking that I'll like be thinking of all of my speech tools because like Caden was saying you don't want to like be talking about something that's totally unrelated to speech and then like um and then like um and then like um and then like I guess get the comment oh um oh um I'm try to remember to like um do a like light contact next time or like a pull out next time because it's like that's not why I'm talking to you um if I um and it's like um and I definitely think that it's like um I definitely think that it's important to like um um to like keep like speech time like totally like separate and like to a like specific time that you both know that's what it's going to be about. I think that's really good advice. Um, that seems so easy to understand that I don't know why um, <laughs> you have to say it, but that's true because I can imagine that it feels like if you're if you're being reminded to use your techniques in everyday conversation, it's pulling you out of the conversation and now you feel as though they're not listening to what you're saying and the conversation stops. So I get that. Thank you um, both yeah. for sharing. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. Um, um, no, yeah. Um, and then like, um, I guess just like a quick example is like, say that I'm like talking to my parents about like something that I'm like super excited about. I'm probably going to be not like disfluent just because like I'm like talking quickly I'm not like thinking about like the way I'm talking and it's like say someone's like oh it seems like you are being more disfluent now uh um I try to think about like this speech tool it's like well then do you want me to talk to you oh no <laughs> so yeah <laughs> Spoken <laughs> like someone who's been there. Um, that, this one I think is on this topic. Do you find that random adults want to give you advice on your speech? Um, as a parent, I know that happens that random people want to give me advice on my child's speech. So you guys, now that you're getting older and I'm sure it's come up, has have, do people like to share their ideas with you. And I'm assuming um, that Lily is referencing people who are not your SLP or your um, your peers who stutter. Um, while I haven't had many experiences where I've been approached by strangers um, or the people that I just met, there have been times where, you know, acquaintances at school, like people that I don't really hang out with a whole lot, but know that I stutter. Um, They'll mention that they they stutter, they may stutter sometimes, um, too, and you know obviously, it's not like stuttering. It's just they get lost in a sentence, you know, once a week. Um, and they always mention about how, you know, how this technique helped them or um, taking this helped them, and like their parents sent them this. This doctor, and I think it's important to realize everyone has a different experience. No one stutterer is going to get over a stutter um, the, the same as anybody else. And most of the time, there's not even a cure. So um, I think it's just important to realize everyone has their own opinion that they are entitled to. That, that doesn't make them a bad person or wrong. Um, but you have to take the, um, what people say with a grain of salt. Um, because they don't know you, they don't know your stutter, and it's different for everybody. Um, yeah. Um, um, so while, like, I would also say that, like, that's not something that I get, like, 
constantly. It has like definitely happened in the past and it is annoying. <laughs> um, and, it, um, and it's just like, and, and I'm going to like preface this by saying I try to like not be like rude with people, but now that I'm thinking about it, it probably like comes across that way, but like fine. Um, but like say someone says something that is like, I guess like that is particularly like, oh, try to like think about what you wanna say and then say it. I kind of like to like say back, huh, that's funny that I've never thought about that before. And I think it like depends on like, and like, and like I mean now that I'm saying that it does sound like I'm being like, I mean like that like does sound like that I'm being like, um, um like um, um like um, rude to them and like I think it like depends on like the person who says it and like the way that they say it, um, but I would say that I, um. I try to, whether or not I say it in the most, like, polite way, I'm, like, just, like, if it was that simple, I would just do it all the time. So it's just kind of, like, yeah. Got it. (laughs) Let's talk about um, advertising or disclosing your sweater. Um, How often do you do it? But specifically... And you can reflect back into um, when you were younger or even how it has changed. Do you do it when you meet new people, when you have a new friend, when you're sitting next to someone in your class, when you're going to go on a date, when you're at a job? When do you guys decide when it's appropriate to, to disclose or advertise your stutter? That's a tough one. And I think it is different with everybody that I meet. Most of the time, if, if, I'm, if I meet somebody just in, on one occasion, I know I'm probably not going to see them again. I won't mention my stutter. Um, I won't bring it up. And it usually just goes away like that. However, if there is, you know, like I, I hit a really bad block, I'll use that as a way to kind of introduce m- m- my stutter. And all I'll say is, oh, I'm sorry, I have a stutter. Um, and then I just keep talking and, you know, they realize it that way. But I think for longer term relationships, um, friends at school, girlfriends, or um, jobs and stuff like that, I try to get it out of the way as soon as I can. Just, just there's no ambiguity there. Um, I mean, I, I've had times like on a, on a football team where I don't say anything and then, then rumors start to spread around. Um, and then I have to address it all at once. That's kind of, that's way harder than just saying it um, straight away. Um, and I think also when I was younger, I was, I didn't advertise nearly as much as I did now. And what kind of helped change that was maybe I'm the, the first person that stutters that they, they've ever met. Um, but they simply just don't know about stuttering. And if I can inform them that I can help everybody else that they'll meet after me who stutters as well. So it's, I'm not, I'm not only advocating for myself, I'm advocating for, for the stuttering community as a whole. And that's what kind of prompted me to, to uh, be more active in my advertising. Um, yeah, um, so like Caden was saying, it's kind of like a, um, it's kind of like something like that you need to like think about. And it's like kind of like, when do I like want to do it? And like, say it's someone that I'm like, going to meet once and then like I'm never going to talk to them I probably won't just because like it's like not like that big of a deal um at at that point um say it's like to a new teacher uh, like going in for uh, like a um job what I'll probably do is like I'll just like send them um a quick message beforehand and just like let them know oh like I'm a person who stutter that just means it will like take me a bit longer to say what I want to um, and things like that. Um, um, sometimes, um, um, sometimes I'll just like meet them, um, like um, for like a job, and like that'll be one of like the um, one of the things that I kind of like one of the things that I like lead in with. Um, 
and then it's like when it's like the like social type of like relationships though like that's kind of when it's like huh well like um oh like um oh like um do I want to do it now uh, like do I, I like wait and what I've found is like I'll typically like like I typically won't advertise when I like when I just meet some someone like that I go to school with and I'll just like wait and kind of like see um like um and then like I'll see um well like the um 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 like the relationship will go and then like say that like and like say that I'm like and like say that like I think okay um like um this is like someone who um um like that I'm becoming close off to I might just like um I might just like um I might just like mention something about the NSA. I'll like see if like um and just kind of like drop it in that way and like just like kind of like casually mention um 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 that I stutter and like sometimes I'll see if like they like um I'll see if like they have any questions about it and like that's just because I feel like a lot of times like um that people do have questions. It's just like, they don't know if it's like, okay to like come to me with those questions. And especially if I'm like becoming like close funds with someone, I like want like them to know it's something that I'm like comfortable with. And that's how I'll kind of like let them know that. So, yeah. That makes sense. Um, to clarify for the parents of younger kids, do you guys, when you guys were in grade school, middle school, high school, did you disclose to your teachers prior to the school year starting? Um, I did, yeah. Um, and I, honestly, my parents helped me with that a lot um, in elementary school and, and middle school and high school too. Um, but just because when, when I was in elementary school, I just, didn't know how to advocate to a teacher in an effective manner where they could help me in a classroom. So I think that was an important place where my parents stepped in and kind of took the lead in that conversation. And then as I got older, going through middle school, um, I, I had more of an input into what I told my teachers. Um, and then my freshman year of high school, um, my parents and I just had like a quick meeting with all my teachers. Um, and I spoke about what stuttering was and what it would look like for me. And then after that, I transitioned just to sending it like a, just a one page email um, before the school year started. Um, and I'm doing that now in college and I haven't had a bad response. Um, they've all been positive. And in my experience, te teachers only want to help. Um, and I think if you can get, get ahead of it before the school year starts, that's all the better. Um, yeah, um, so I, um, so I probably, like, began being, like, a, um, I guess, like, being a participant with, like, telling my teachers in middle school, and, um, and for a lot of that, I think it was, like, just, um, my mom and dad, um, um, just, like, sending them um, something, um, 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 like, um, 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 like, um, um, like sending them a message and, like, talking to them on the phone, um, and then when I got to middle school, um, they kind of helped, like, set up, um, a presentation I would give at the beginning of each school year, and then once I, um, transitioned from middle school into high school. Um, that's when I just um, began to send my teacher um, a quick e e email um, before the semester began, and I would just like tell them. Um, um, it's like just tell them a bit about what stuttering is, and just like tell them, like what I would find to be um like t to be the most helpful from them 
and I've continued doing that in college. And like Caden said, I haven't really had a um, bad response to it since, um, like, um, since most T shows like should want to like be as like accommodating as possible. Right. Okay. Good. Um, Matt, is are you the only person in your immediate family that stutters? Um. So um. Um, so, um, so, um, um, so my mom sometimes does, um, it's definitely, like, not, um, it's, like, definitely not that n noticeable now, um, but she has, like, said that, like, um, um, like, um, um, like, um, said that when she was a, um, kid, that it was more noticeable. Did you, so I know for some um, kids, they're the only person they know that stutters mm -hmm. for a long time. Um, was that your situation or did you kind of feel like that's something you shared with your mom or it's something that she had a long time ago and you didn't really share it? Yeah, um, so yeah, like, so while like I knew she like did a long time ago, it, like, um, like since I like didn't like know someone who like sp who like spoke the same way as me, I kind of like um I didn't really know someone, and I also feel like it's different when it's like someone that you like have no connection to opposed to like um opposed to, like a family member, because it's like oh yeah I mean I guess that my mom does but like um 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 but like it's just like um. It's just like, um, I guess it's like my mom is my mom, and like it's like someone like that's, like, like it's like she's not someone, like that I have no connection to. So it's like kind of like not the same when you like meet someone who you like, like I'm like I'm I'm don't know, and then it's like oh they also have a stutter. So yeah, um, and I didn't really meet anyone else. Um, that stutter out until I um, went to a conference in 2015. So, yeah. what was that like? That was definitely an interesting experience <laughs> um, because going from like being the only person in my school, uh, like so I thought um, that stutter out, and then going to a conference of like a thousand people and like. And and most of the people that do have a stutter, and the people who don't, all know someone who does. Um, so that was definitely like a, it was kind of like a overwhelming experience. Um, the first time I went, especially since like I was 15 at that point. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So since I was like 15 at that point, it was like something that I had like known about for a long time and I had like and I had never met someone else for like all that time and then when I like m and then when I met all of those people who stood out I was like huh this is a it's like was definitely like a it was definitely like a funny type of like um I guess it was like a funny um feeling yeah yeah Kaden, can you talk about um, when you first met another person that stuttered? Yeah, um, it was eye-opening. Um, I was around 10 years old, I think, and we went to a uh, like a NSA family day um, at a park in our city. Um, and that was the first time I really understood what stuttering was on the bigger picture obviously i knew what it went what it meant for myself um but that was the first time i met other kids who stuttered other adults who stuttered which which was in my in my eyes the, the most impactful because that was the first time i realized oh you know i may have this for, for the rest of my life and look at all these adults who are very successful and they also stutter um that made me realize, you know, it's not it's not going to be the end of the world. Stuttering is okay, um, 
and as I kind of got to know the NSA better and I went to that first conference, um, like Matt said, meeting a thousand people who stuttered, it just, it blew my world wide open. Um, and, you know, I, I went from knowing nobody to knowing a whole bunch of people. And um, as a 10 year old kid, um, you know, it, it kind of made, it made me realize that such a stuttering is a lot bigger than myself. And everyone here can, can relate to what I'm experiencing because in school, I didn't really know anybody else and not my family either. Um, so just having those new connections kind of, um, it, it, it kind of changed, changed the way I thought about my stutter and then stuttering as a whole in general. Okay. Um, if you guys could go back and tell your eight-year-old self, so that's like way back, second, third grade, um, one thing about stuttering, what would it be? Um, I guess, um, I guess if I could go back, I would just like, I mean, I mean, like, I feel like it's funny, like, um, I feel like it's funny, like, cliche, and it's probably like, um, it's probably like, not that, um, it's probably like, not that insightful. Um, but, um, but I guess I would like, just tell them um, that it's like, okay, to stutter and um, that, um, and like that you're not alone and that, um, and I would like just say to like keep talking and saying what you want to say. Kaden? Uh, I think I would say that stuttering is not the end of the world. Um, stuttering is not going to define you for the rest of your life. Um, and that, like Matt said, it is okay to stutter. Um, I think when I was eight years old, I was very focused on fluency. Um, so I would let myself know, you know, fluency is not the end goal here. Um, the end goal is to just accept it and, you know, be happy with who you are. Um, and yeah, that's what I taught my eight-year-old self. Okay. I know you both have siblings. Um... I have heard from parents where there's some friction just because siblings fight in general and um, the sibling that doesn't stutter maybe teases the other one that does specifically about stuttering. Um, did you have any issues with that? Um, how did your siblings either support or how did you get them on the same page with your thoughts on stuttering? Um. I think, you know, in our house, everybody kind of knew stuttering wasn't something to be made fun of um, because both my parents and my sister knew that I had no control over it. Um, so in that aspect, you know, there wasn't ever really an issue. Um, I'm lucky that my sister has been very supportive of my stuttering. Um, and I think just, you know, having those relationships set where you can talk about it openly um, that really helps because, you know, I, I can talk t t to my sister about stuttering, even, even though she's not a person who stutters because she's been around me for my entire life and she knows what it looks like and how I feel. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so I would say, um, that my experience with my sister, uh, Kathleen, um, 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 I mean, it sounds like it was like about the same as um Cadence. Um, she didn't really ever like make fun of it. Um, she would occasionally finish my sentences a long time ago, and then um, um, and then my mom would like be like, Kathleen, don't do that. Um, and um. Um, so then she would like, just like not do it. Um, um, and I would say, um, that, um, 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 that like, she's been, um, um, that she's been like pretty, um, a, a good with it. Um, and now like that she like knows a bit more about it. Um, like, um, 
I'm like I'm shell kind of like um I'm like I'm I'm like I'm shell kind of like um like shell like let's see I'm trying to think of I, I just totally lost my like um I just lost my train of thought no, for a second um so she will like sometimes um 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 like um I'm like mentions studying and the National Studying Association to like um um to people um that I like don't even know um 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 um, um because she went to a conference in um 2019 and that was the first one that she had been to and like she thought it was just like a um super cool experience as someone who did not stutter and um, she thought that like the community piece of it um, um, was cool, and um, since like she like knows more about it, um, um, since we've talked about it a bit, um, she's like, um, 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 like said so that like sometimes how when like she's at school, if someone makes a like comment or a joke about stuttering, it's like she'll like. Um, like um, um, like um, she'll like shoot them down, kind of, and like she'll just like say like um what she knows about it. Um, so she's definitely um, 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 been good when it comes to stuttering. Okay. Do you two um feel as though stuttering holds you back from achieving your goals? lay it on us um, there have there have been times where i've felt that way yes um you know when i was when i was little i loved sports and i wanted to, to be a sportscaster um and then i realized wait a second i stutter um and when i was little that was like you know it kind of crushed me for, 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 for a little bit because um i thought that i couldn't have a public voice as a person who stutter, who stutters. And, you know, as I've gotten older and I've learned about more people, um, it's very possible. Um, and, you know, there are times like um, where I feel that my, my stutter is a barrier, um, you know, in achieving something. I mean, it happens, it happens with, with school presentations all the time, um, but I always get through them. And it's fine. Um, so I think you know, achieving those little short-term goals that I feel like I can't accomplish because I stutter have helped me realize that my long-term goals um, are very achievable, um, no matter my fluency. Um, yeah. Um, no. Yeah. Um, so. Mm, yeah. Um, so I think like that. This is like a good question and like thing to like just keep in mind um because i feel like for all, like this uh um um i feel like for all, most of this call it's like um it's been me and Caden like oh yeah like things are like fine and like it's like never a problem and like that's like definitely sometimes like that i'm like well this kind of sucks um and um 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 so like the um and like yeah um and like i'm the um um i'm so like i'm that i've like definitely like i'm been sometimes that i'm like oh well um um oh um i like don't want to do this i like i like don't think i can do something because i stutter although i'm um, like kaden said it's not so much like what i want to do in the long term, it tends to just kind of like, um, it tends to just like affect like small-ish uh, short term goals. Um, and that's just like kind of like something that you need to like sit with and like just kind of like figure out like what to think about that. So, yeah. I think, um both of you made some really insightful points that it's not necessarily the long-term goals, but it's those 
little things, those little challenges that add up to that. Um, and Kate and I like how you said that, you know, once you do it, that helps you realize the long-term goals are achievable, but I hear what you're both saying and it makes sense that it kind of sticks. Um, how is dating with a stutter? <laughs> Does anyone want to talk well, about that? Parents always want to know and parents want to know how is dating period, but how is dating with a stutter? I would say for me, it's never really come into play except for those first little introductions. Um, so, you know, like a first date or meeting somebody for the first time, it, it can be a little bit awkward until you disclose the fact that, that you stutter. Um, but once you open that that discourse, I, I never really found there. I, I, never, I never really found an issue. Um, I think if the the person's if the person is right for you, that they're, they're not going to make or break their decision based on your speech. Um, that's how I really looked at it. So if somebody were to you know not want to date me or whatever because I said her, that's not a reflection on me. That's you know that's their problem. Um, handle makes sense yeah um yeah um so i guess i don't really um i guess it's also like never been um a big um i guess like a big challenge in that sense um i guess like that could also um um, um i guess like that could also um be because like the people who i have like dated in the past I've known them before we began to like date, so it's um um so it's not like that was like um so it's like not like that like was ever like a oh I'm going on a first date with someone that I've like never like spoken to and they'll be like um and they'll be like taken by surprise um that I stutter. Um, so I can't say that I have um, much experience with that, um, but um, um, but like Caden said, um, I haven't really had any like problems with it, and not just with dating, um, but like say someone makes like such a big deal about something that they wouldn't date me, or, like they um, um, or, like that they like wouldn't want to um, be my friend, or, like just like something like that. Um, then, like that's probably not someone that I would want to like date to begin with so yeah makes sense how do you and do you ever run into people um that really just don't get it and don't understand why you're not doing x y or z or why you are accepting your stutter um, have you run into any of that? Do you have to deal with that? Is that something parents worry about that's not rational? Um, I, there have been some times where, you know, a friend has just said, you know, why don't you just think harder and make it go away? Um, or why do you not care about your speech when it, it affects you and it seems so easy to, 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 to get over it? Um, I try not to let those things get kind of get to me because obviously they don't know what stuttering is or what it looks like for me. Um, they don't know about the NSA or anything that I do within that. Um, so I, I, I try not to let it get under my skin. Um, of course, there are times when it, it does. Um, but a, a big part of that is just keeping focus on what, on what I do and how I think and, you know, my my perspective on my stutter and not to let anybody else really infringe upon that. Um, yeah, um, no, yeah, um, pretty much like the um, same as what Caden said. Um, when people like say, oh, well, like, um, oh, well, like, um, couldn't you like, just like think about what you wanna say? Or, like, couldn't you just like, slow down uh, like couldn't he just like do like xyz it's like kind of like i mean 
I could, and that hasn't helped. So, I mean, no, I can't. Um, but it's, like, sort of, like, um, and like Hayden was saying, that, like, stuttering, like, stuttering is not something um, that most people know a whole lot about. Um, so it's probably, most of the time, not coming, like, from a um from like a place of like trying to like be mean it's like just like that they don't really like know much about it and like they don't really like understand what causes it and like why it's not just like a quick fix um so like sometimes I'll just like try to say like well I mean like that's not like I mean like that's not what studying is like it's not like um, it's not like when most people give a presentation and they're like talking too fast and they get like chuffed up. It's like, um, it's like not the same thing as that. So it's like kind of like um, the same types of like tips that might help someone who's typically fluent won't help someone who like stutters. So I just try to like explain it to them in that way. Um, I think that everyone um, has heard the, the phrase over, overcome your stutter, has overcome his stutter, is overcoming your stutter. What is, what are your thoughts um, about that phrase? I've overcome my stutter or I am overcoming my stutter. How does that relate? I think that there are two ways you can interpret that phrase, one of which it can be damaging. Um, if you view it at overcoming as becoming fluent, then you set a, a goal that some kids might not be able to attain. And that feels really bad when all you want is to become fluent, but you can't do it. Um, however, if you view o overcoming your stutter as accepting it and becoming okay with it and um, not letting it define what you do on, on a day-to-day -day basis, that's okay. Um, because for most people, that that's what overcoming your stutter looks like, um, making it not a part of the, the forefront in your everyday life. Um, yeah. Um, I think um, um, that Caden um, said it well, and, and like that it's, um, and like that that's like the way of that meaning that you've become fluent, and like that's like the definition of like that you don't like, um, it's like that you don't let it um, define you and you don't let it um, prevent you from doing what you want to do. Um, and it's like kind of like, um, um, and the way that like some people who, that I have put it um, that I think is a good way um, for like some people is um, that they define it as um, um, as like that whether or, um, is that whether or not they have a good day doesn't depend on whether or not their speech was like um, 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 was like fluent that day. And I think that that's like a, um, um, I think that that's kind of like a um, good way to think about it too. Thank you guys for both of those um, insightful points. Um, we're almost out of time, but I think um, the final question is, I know both of you got involved um, in terms of volunteering for the NSA soon after you found the NSA, what, and you both now are overseeing um, the Teen Advisory Council, having been on the Teen Advisory Council for a few years um, prior to that, what, what motivated you to, to um, choose to spend some of your free time doing that? Um, I think a big part of it for me was knowing how I felt when I didn't know anybody else that stuff. Um, and when I went to that first conference and saw that 
the TAC was able to do these national outreach projects um, and you know reach a wider audience. I wanted to be involved with that, um, and you know just the desire to kind of expand the NSA and reach more teens, so you know that they didn't have to feel what I felt. Um, that's what made me want to kind of you know make the TAC better. Um, yeah, um, so why I um, guess like I choose to spend my time doing things with the NSA um, was like that it like goes back to when I went to my first conference and it was like a overwhelming experience of just kind of like, um, of just like finding, uh, I guess like that like finally seeing that it's like not like just me who talks like this and like seeing all of like the good that um that um that the NSA can do and that was something that I was like oh like that would be cool to be a part of and to be able um to kind of like I guess like to be able to help people like feel the same way that I felt the first time um that like I found out about the NSA and um and that as well as like just kind of like um like trying to like spread a well honest about um what's that on is um because i would say like um that those are like the two um main poisons well, I know that I speak for all the parents um, when we thank you for what you guys do every day. Um, what is your final piece of advice to the parents? I guess you can, I'm sure you have tons, but if you had to narrow it down to just a couple sentences, um, what is your advice to these parents of kids who stutter? Um, I would say to encourage and create an environment where your child can speak freely. Um, and freely d does not mean fluently, um, not at all, really. Um, freely just means they can speak how they want and say what they want without the pressure of fluency, without the pressure of their um, techniques. Um, that was a big thing for me was having, you know, that environment where there was no pressure to be fluent. Um, that really helped with the emotional side of, of my stutter um, because everywhere else in school, ordering food and sports, there was the pressure to be fluent. Um, so having that environment um, really, really helped me. Yeah. Um, so I would, um, I guess I would say um, if I could just like give a few uh, sentences of what I um, think is that um, is like that let them oh, let's see I guess it's like try to like keep them talking as much as they want to and it's kind of like what Caden said um, 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 is that like don't like let when they get home just like um, it's like don't make that be an extension of like school and just like um and just like a um and it's like don't let that be an extension of like feeling like they need to be fluent once they get home um because like that can be like a tiring thing to feel um all day long um and just i guess um and like focusing on what they say and not how they say it and um and making sure like that um and um and i guess like making sure that they know that not just by what you say but like um um but like the way like that you respond to them um and the way that like you act thank you guys again um, I really appreciate you both taking the time. It's the middle of the week. You're both 
probably just finishing up with midterms. It's late where you're at. Um, I'm sure you have more fun things to do, but we really value your input. Um, I feel like we got a lot out of both of you. I'm proud of you both for sharing, um, speaking as a mom. Um, parents, I just want to remind you that if you have any additional questions for Caden or Matt, their contact information is on the webpage under, um, I think it's like Meet the NSA. They're listed with the Teen Advisory Council. My contact information is on there as well if you wanted. Um, any resources or have any other questions. Um, if you guys want information about how to get your kids or your teens involved, the three of us can help you with that. Caden and Matt facilitate um, NSA teen talks that are appropriate for tweens also, which would be like 11 and 12 and on up um, almost every month. So um, that might be something fun for your kids to do. Thank you guys. Um, for everything for joining us. I appreciate it. Have a good night.